Hello everyone, I'm Al Simchi. I'm a pediatric dentist in New Jersey and I'm really honored to be, have been invited to speak for the Center for Early Childhood Carry Research. Um, it was really nice for you guys to reach out and I'm hoping that um, in this little talk I can open your eyes to one of the tricks that we use in behavior management in our office to really change our patient's perception um, pretty much throughout the entire um, appointment. It's not just something that we use you know, in specific instances, we use magic really throughout the entire appointment, even sometimes, you know, with patients that don't have an appointment just to get them used to the entire environment. And uh, hopefully you guys will learn a little bit about how we use it in our practice. So here's just a little background. Um, we live in Passaic, New Jersey, um, with my wife and six children. Um, I've been doing pediatric dentistry since about 2009. Um, when I started off, I did pretty much as much conventional pediatric dentistry as most people do, but over time I tried to find the ways to make my patients' experiences and their parents' experiences and even the staff in the office's experience a better experience to help them really kind of work their way through it. And this is a little bit of where my journey started. As a kid, I really did not like going to the dentist. Um, I'm still an adult and I still don't like going to the dentist. So um, for me, trying to change our patients' entire experience from something that may be something that they feared beforehand to be something more exciting, something they can look forward to is really the goal of, of everything I do. I was actually approached recently by a parent who told me that his four-year-old was told that his appointment had been pushed off and the four-year-old started crying. So that's really our goal. Our goal is to try to make it that our patients are looking forward to coming to the office, that they're looking forward to you know seeing the dentist, seeing the staff, and really not going into it as something that they're terrified about. Here's, you know, just a, a little example. This patient was so scared from his previous experiences at the dentist that he started off hiding under the desk. Um, he was hiding under his brother's legs and little by little we kind of worked our way around it so that way, you know, he, we could build a little trust. And you can see towards the end of the appointment, he was already my best friend. He jumped up into my arms. He was giving me his high five. He was really excited to be there. Um, but when I started my journey in pediatric dentistry, that really wasn't the way everything always went. Um, oftentimes when we had a child that was a little more nervous, we kind of just pushed the issue and we, we just, you know, it was our job to make it happen and that's what we did. So as I've progressed and evolved in the way I do pediatric dentistry and the way I try to do my behavior management, one of the things that we really focus on is getting our patients focus away from the dentistry part of it and really more focused on everything peripheral to that. So we don't want it to look like a medical procedure. We want it to look like something that's exciting for them, something that they look forward to um, and can really speak to their friends about and something they can even try by themselves. We have patients that go home and decide that they're going to learn how to do magic tricks. So it's really something that, that I've worked on over the years. It was really pretty much a slow process when I started it. Um, I'm not really a great magician. I've never really been into magic that much. But it, it was just, you know, a wonderful situation that happened. I was at the mall one day with my wife and we watched somebody do a magic trick at a little store. Um, and I watched the magic trick and I was really amazed at how smoothly it went and I really couldn't figure that trick out at all. And I was about to leave and my wife looked at me and said, well, you're going to be working with children. Don't you think that would be a good idea? A sort of an icebreaker. And it was really great that she did tell me that because I purchased that trick and I've been doing that trick for probably now about 15 years. Um, and it really makes a difference because um, the way our patients see us is very different than the way I remember seeing my dentist as a kid. So we, we really, um, I feel like, have changed things in our office significantly. Um, I'm going to go a little bit into details of how magic works. I'm, I'm not very into the academics of it because for me, I don't need a study to show me that something works. If I use it and it works, I'm, I'm happy. So there are definitely studies. I only posted a few just because um, we don't have that much time. But this is one of the studies that was done, um, and you can see actually on the email address, it's from Magic Aid. They're an organization, I think, out of England that really does a lot about bringing magic into um, the medical world. They work in hospitals, they work in clinics, um, and they realized over time how much of an effect it had on their patients. So they actually did a study, and their conclusion was that if they integrated a magic therapy program into it, and there are now hospitals, I know in Israel there are, are um, classes for this where people learn how to be magical clowns um, and medical clowns, and they learn how to do all of these things that really make a connection between their patients. And one of the studies actually showed um, that 
when a magician is working, especially in a medical situation with a child one-on-one, -on -one, they build a trust that's not just a patient practitioner trust, and it's more a one-on-one -on -one trust. So when the patient sees that the, the the doctor is doing a magic trick, it shows them that they're kind of taking their time, they're doing something that would be exciting for the patient, and it really makes more of a bond between them. And not only that, there are actually studies that show that when a magician teaches somebody's trick, that also brings a closer bond to them because it's showing a trust from something that the magician really considers something really secret, and when they're sh showing that um, and sharing that with their patient and with the person that they're, they're working with, it allows that person to kind of open up a little bit and realize, hey, we have something in common. You like this. I like this. Um, and it really works well to get them to open up. So really with our patients in dentistry, dentistry itself can be something that's very frightening. It can be something that, that especially with the pediatric population, they're really not looking forward to. But when we give them this level of trust, they come to us not as much as practitioners, but as people that they can work together with as a team. And that makes the rest of the appointment much easier. Here's just a little clip of one of those situations where we use magic in our office. So for this patient, even if her appointment was not as exciting as she thought it was going to be, if something tasted bad, if something was uncomfortable, she's not going to go home with that memory. She's not going to go home with a memory of, oh, I didn't like something about it. I didn't like how it feel, felt or how it tasted or how it smelled. Um, she's going to go home with the, the, sort of the memory of the magic trick that she just got to do with me. Um, and it really kind of takes that focus, again, like I was saying, it takes that focus away from the medical or the dental aspect of it and puts it more on something that she can be excited with. Um, this particular trick, actually, I've sent a few dentists around the world. It's a really, really easy trick to, to do. It's called a magical coloring book. It does not take a lot of magical skills, and it has a lot of effect. And I have found for anybody who's really looking to incorporate magic tricks into their office that the really the trick to getting a magic trick that's really effective is to find something that's very visual, um, doesn't take a lot of setup and a lot of time. Um, and it's also ideal if you can have something that you can work with the patient. For instance, with this one, we can pretend that she's doing the coloring um, and it really makes it sort of a team effort. This is another study. Um, I think this one may have been out of... India, but I'm not sure. Um, and this was just discussing different behavior modification techniques for children that were anxious in the dentist, uh, the, the dentist office. And the conclusion came out that magic tricks definitely can be used as a behavior management aid. Um, and again, I've been asked many, many times, how do we incorporate that into the everyday sort of dentistry? We don't really have a protocol. I have a bunch of tricks throughout the office. I keep tricks in my pocket um, pretty much at all times. And it's just something that goes with the flow of the practice and the flow of the appointment. If it seems like the patient is getting a little anxious or getting a little tired, um, breaking up the appointment with a magic trick kind of takes, again, the focus off of the parts that they don't like, and it just kind of reawakens their interest in what's going on. So I found that that's very, very effective. Um, this is a study actually out of Israel, and their conclusion from the study when they discussed sort of doing magic tricks with especially younger patients and stronger-willed patients was that it was able to move the child into the chair a little easier and also allow them, us as dentists to take x-rays a little easier. And what it really does, I find, for the kids who are strong-willed is that when you try to fight against a strong-willed ch child and you're trying to force them or, or kind of coerce them into doing something they don't want to do, they just kind of like dig in and they decide that they're going to do what they want to do. And our goal really is to help them see a different way to get out of that. So for us in our practice, when this happens, we take the focus away from it. We put the focus onto a magic trick. Most kids, even if they're not really interested in having a discussion, are interested in seeing something that's a little unusual. And when that happens, um, you can see actually in the next slides that slowly but surely um, they may get a little bit more used to you. So this little patient, he was about two or three years old when he came in. He lied down on the floor and he was not interested at all um, in anything we had to say. He was just not going to have a dentist visit that day. Um, little by little, 
um, we did a little magic trick with some bubbles and you can see as we kind of moved along um, he worked his way into the dental room at the beginning um, and eventually even worked his way into the chair and this all takes steps and I've been asked another sort of important question is how do you incorporate this without taking so much time? A lot of times, you know, in clinics or in dental offices, we're really rushed to get our patients in and get everything done. And I've really found over the years that the more focus we put on in the beginning in terms of making the appointment a more fun and enjoyable experience, the less time we have to spend trying to push through an appointment that the patient may not want. So even though doing these steps took a little bit longer, it's really just a few minutes at the beginning, but then the rest of the appointment takes so much faster that you really end up saving all that time. So for this patient, in theory, we could have lifted him up, put him in the chair, and really just pushed to get through. But instead, we did it little by little. We did some magic tricks. He saw some bubbles, got some balloons, and he ended up um, with a great experience that's also going to save us time in his subsequent appointments because it's not going to be a fight to get him in every time. If we would have just lifted him up and put him in the chair, the next time probably would have been the exact same thing. But because we worked with him at the beginning, um, that kind of got him slowly used to the environment and used to what we were doing. And the next appointment, he did great and came right back into the chair by himself. So how does, re how does magic really help us with this? What is magic actually doing when it comes to behavior management? So magic really, um, I saw a quote that magic is really in the mind of the audience. The art of the magician is manipulating the minds of the audience. And really, it's really neuroscience. It's the way people think and the way people act towards what they're thinking. So one of the descriptions of magic is changes in perception. It's really changing what you think is going to happen. When somebody sees a magic show, they have a perception that something specific is going to happen. And it, you know, your mind is amazed when it doesn't actually go the way you think. Um, and here's a case in point. When I was in residency, we actually had a patient um, who came in. This is a laughing gas setup that we had. Uh, nitrous oxide when we were in residency and when he first came in he was very nervous and he told us right away that he only wanted to have his dental work done um, with laughing gas because he had it, had it in the past and that was really all he was interested in. Um, when I sent my assistant to check on the laughing gas she actually came back and told me that the tanks were empty and we didn't have any laughing gas left that day. Um, so we kind of had to improvise a little bit and you can see from the next slide that perception is really what it's about because this is the next slide and you can see that he actually didn't have laughing gas, um, but he thought he had laughing gas. And because we were able to change his perception, even though this is not a specific magic trick, the magic trick in this is that he actually had his entire treatment done like this without any laughing gas. Uh, his mom was in the back of the room laughing hysterically because she thought it was the funniest thing to see that her son was having the work done so easily. Uh, he actually had no local anesthetic, no laughing gas, but because he perceived it as such, he did amazingly. One of the other descriptions of magic is attentional blindness. So basically, people see something, but they don't really pay attention. The way the mind works is that your mind really filters out the things that are important and the things that are not important. There was a study done um, where there was a video of people throwing basketballs back and forth to each other, and the subjects were asked to count how many times the balls were passed from person to person. In the middle of the video, somebody walks across the screen wearing a gorilla suit, and most people in the study never even noticed the person with the gorilla suit because they were really focusing on one specific thing. And that's also what we're trying to do when we're using magic and dentistry. We're trying to have our patients focus on the parts that are the fun parts and take the focus really, really off of all the parts that may not be fun. So dentistry in general is not a, a fun uh, occupation to have done to you. It's not fun having injections. It's not fun having teeth drilled. But if the focus is off of that and the focus is on something else and the focus for the patient is seeing the ma next magic trick. And again, it doesn't have to be a specific magic trick that you do. Anything in the office can be made into magic. So you can show them a magic trick or you can even have the patient in our office when the chair goes up and down we make that into magic we'll raise the patient's hand and the chair will go up and put the chair down when the patient puts their hand down and the same thing with the handpiece when i'm using the handpiece i tell my patients that their hand is magic and if they don't like something when we're doing it they can just raise their hand and we'll stop immediately so even if it's not a specific magic trick it's something that's magical in their mind and it just takes their attention off of what we wanted away from and puts it onto what we wanted on and that always makes the the appointment easier for the patients here's another short video of how we use that i've actually gotten people send me videos of them doing the same trick from all over the world it's really a great trick and it really changes appointments where patients come into an appointment with dread and fear and it changes those appointments amazingly so here's that video
Yeah? One second, nice to go. One, two, three, go. Good. You felt that little push? Okay, then it's super loose. So now we just take a minute. Then we'll take a bite. Break for a minute. Bite down. Okay, now it's loose enough. So you tell me when you want to take that. Do you want to take it out now or are you nervous about it? I want to take it out. I'll take it out soon. I'll do magic. You'll be surprised. Are you nervous a little bit? Nervous? Nervous? How much? On a scale of 1 to 10 of nervousness? 11. 11. Uh oh. Alright, so instead of doing it the scary way, we'll do it the easy way. Is that a deal? Okay. Okay. Alright, so close your lips together. I'm gonna try to see if I can get it out of here. Do you believe that I can do that? You don't believe? You're gonna feel pulling. It's next to your hearing. You ready? Close your mouth so that way I can't cheat. Are you ready? I can't take it out of your mouth, right? Are you ready? Still nervous? One, two, three. Hang on. One second, one second, one second. Big. Guess what? Tap. 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 Bite down. Right. Told you. Told you. Is that a good way to do it? <laughs> now you're nervous. Can you put it back in again? Awesome, awesome job. job. So I'm not sure with this video how well the videos that I play, how the sound will go through, but just a quick thing in case the sound does not go through, is that in this video, this patient was super nervous about having a tooth out. When she came in, she was already crying to mom that she didn't think she could do it. Um, and little by little, we worked our way through. For those who want to try this trick, it's really a trick that changes kids coming in from terrified kids to kids that are so thrilled with what happened that they run home and they tell all their friends. Um, and the trick basically is to make sure that they're fully anesthetized. At that point, I always warn them um, that they're going to feel a little pressure. And instead of just loosening the tooth or elevating the tooth, that's, that's the point really where we extract the tooth. So we kind of change their perception of what's happening. So even though we are extracting, I don't tell them at that point that we're doing an extraction. I tell them at that point that they're going to feel a little pressure and we're loosening up the tooth. Um, but that's when we do the extraction, actually. And at that point, they're really done. So when I asked her how nervous she was on a scale of 1 to 10, she told me she was an 11. Um, so she came in there really, really nervous. But at that point in the appointment, her tooth is already out. Um, and to make it a more magical experience, we offered to take the tooth out of her ear, which of course she went for because she was so scared about it coming out of her mouth. Um, and when it comes out of her ear, you can see on her face how her eyes already light up and she's all excited and she tells her mom that she did it. Um, I had a patient recently, well not even so recently, it's been a while now, but she finished and she told me that she was so proud of herself because it's really a relief for them because they're going in with this idea that they're having a tooth taken out and that it's a really terrifying experience and when they get the magic of that experience that's not as scary and it's not painful, uh, it really changes everything. So magic is also creating an alternate reality. So in a case like this, the reality is that the tooth was already out, um, but we're changing that reality in their mind. So we're explaining things, and that really is a behavior management technique that works even without magic tricks at all. Um, changing reality is one of the things we do every day. When we describe things to patients in a different terminology, if we tell a patient instead of calling it an injection, we call it sleepy juice, or instead of calling something a drill, we call it a whistling you know, toothbrush. All those things are changing the reality to the patient. So they're changing from something that could be really, really frightening to something that's much more benign. Before I give an injection to my patients, I tell them that they may feel something really, really cold. So instead of saying they're going to feel something like a pinch, because a pinch sounds really, really frightening, I tell them that it's going to feel really cold. So even if they do feel the same pinch and the same discomfort, their reality in their mind is not that it's something scary like a pinch. It's something that's pretty benign, like something that's too cold. And it just helps kind of ease the shock of something that may be more scary at that time. Um, and I found that it really, really helps because we don't have patients getting all scared when they feel like a little um, discomfort. They just raise their hand magically and we stop what we're doing. And I felt like it really, really helps a lot um, to change the way they look at things. And then again, magic is all about distraction and misdirection. Um, having a patient pay attention to one thing while something else is going on is super, super helpful. So we may have our assistant um, blowing up a balloon or making something disappear next to the patient while we're doing something in the patient's mouth. So they're sort of misdirected and distracted into focusing on the less scary part of the, the procedure. And again, there's no specific time where magic helps. It's really important as a dentist to pay attention to every step of everything so that you're seeing when you may have to do something. Oftentimes, you can get an appointment done and people ask me, do I do magic for every patient every day? And the answer is no. I do magic oftentimes for patients when they need it. Um, a lot of patients already expect it and they, they know that it's happening. And there are even parents that come in 
you know, because they want to see a magic trick. So you really have to just have some options available. Um, and I'm going to show you another quick trick here that shows you also with misdirection um, how a patient can look in one direction and something happens in the other side. So I'm going to take this. Okay, now put it in your hand. Your hand. See if you can make it scoot. You think you can? You can. Slowly. What? Wait, you can do that. Oh. Okay, one more time. I think it's a whistle. Okay, so I'm going to have to get something that's not in this one. The point, so that way you can see it. And see if you can make this in this. Feel it. Yeah, it's not invisible, right? Right. See if you can make this in this. You can? You can? Let's see. Walk it. Grab it like this. Slap on your hand. <laughs> How'd you do that? I don't know. Check your other hand. Help somehow to read Okay, one more thing. Something bigger. This is bigger. Okay, you're gonna make this disappear. Use your hand. Use your hand. In the truck. In the truck. You ready? You ready? Okay, here we go. One. One. Two. Two. You think I can do this? Do this? What? <laughs> you know what I'm doing right here. How'd you do that? <laughs> So again, for people who want to do magic tricks in the office, these are some of the easiest things that you can do. Patients love them. You don't need a lot of props for it. Um, the light trick is a light call is a trick called D lights. Um, you can buy that online um, in many different um, websites. It's usually under twenty dollars, and it really is an easy trick to learn and has a really big effect. Um, with the coin trick, that's one that you really have to use misdirection because when she thought the coin was in one hand and she was looking at that one hand, I automatically take the coin and I stick it under my other hand. So she doesn't even know that it's there. And when she's looking for it in her own hand, that's when I pull it out. So even though everything is being done really out in the open, there's not a lot of things that are being hidden because her focus is directed in a different direction. Um, you know, she doesn't even notice it's happening in the first place. Um, and one other trick that you can see that's a really good trick, um, it's actually published in Dr. Kupietsky's book on behavior management, is the trick with the pen. And basically you just lift the pen, put it into your hand, lift it and put it into your hand. And the third time you just tuck it behind your ear. So if you just pick it up, I'll try to show you on the video if you can see it, you just hold it like this and go one and two. And then you just put it over here and they can't see that happen. And then it disappears. So you just need something that's going to stay behind your ear. But it's also a very easy trick to learn and one that has a really big effect on our patients. So hopefully you learned something about how we use magic in behavior management. Um, I tried to stay a little bit more towards the practical and a little away from the academics of it because I do find that even if studies say something, it doesn't always kind of translate into practice. But over the years, I've learned probably 50 or 60 different tricks, and we really try to incorporate them in different ways um, throughout the day. And I really feel like if it's something that you would be interested in, it really helps with the behavior management in the practice. So uh, thank you again to the Center for Early Childhood Caries Research for having me. I hope that you guys learned something from this uh, short talk, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Have a great day.